Every tattoo has a story behind it. My father, for instance, whom of which covered in tattoos, has two that really stick out to me. One is of a badge on the outer side of his hand, and the other is flames that go up each arms. Together, those tattoos share his story of being a longtime volunteer firefighter. My mother, a couple of years ago, had a back piece, back piece done of a butterfly, which is a symbol that means a great deal to her, and surrounding it is the names of her four children. My, um, both my parents have over eight tattoos each, and my older siblings have also joined in the family tradition. As for me, I have one really small tattoo, and it's right here. No, I'm not super into grammar, as I've been asked before. This tattoo holds a much deeper meaning than that. Let me give you some backstory. In 2015, the Project Semicolon was started by Amy Bluel. In 2015, it became a national movement. Amy wanted to pay tribute to her father that had committed suicide 10 years prior. A semicolon, grammatically, is used when an author could have ended a sentence but chose not to. The author continued to write on. A semicolon tattoo is used as a metaphor for mental health, you being the author and the sentence being your life. This tattoo may be small, but it holds a, much, a great means to me. I've lost over 12 friends to suicide in the past 10 years, and I myself have come close twice to ending my own life. I knew when I got this tattoo put on my wrist that I was creating an invitation, an invitation to share my story with anyone that had asked or was willing to listen, because I believe that the sharing of stories today is exceptionally important. And today I want to share a part of my story with you. I grew up in a very small area called Demons Ferry, Pennsylvania, and you know, uh, I was raised mostly by my mother, who was stay at home at the time, and my father, despite working very long days out of state, still managed to volunteer for Little League, for Boy Scouts, and other fatherly activities. I had my two older sisters, them being 10 and 7 years older than I am, and my younger sister, who's four years younger. Outside looking in, it was a very normal childhood. I watched TV, I did crafts, and I grew up in a house that valued hard work and education. It, it wasn't very common for us, my family, despite you know arguing like all families do, to spend every evening together having dinner, and on the weekends, often playing board games, card games, just to spend time with one another. I guess then it's a surprise then for many that someone like me who grew up in a house that was very loving and supportive to find themselves holding a medicine bottle, you know, after throwing up a dangerous amount of medication, trying to undo a suicide attempt at age 14. Or, sorry, <laughs> someone who grew up in a house that wasn't neglectful or abuseful and found themselves backing out of a suicide attempt from carbon monoxide poisoning at age 18. Sorry. <laughs> it was in middle school when I started to feel really low about myself. I didn't know why. I had friends. I had my very loving family. Yet, I just didn't feel right. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how to put how I was feeling into terms that other people could understand. And, you know, being how mature middle schoolers are, my friends weren't exactly understanding of me not being happy all the time and me not being there for them when I wanted to be. As a result, a lot of them wanted to stop being, um, being friends with me, which led me to feeling more lonely and on went a vicious cycle. So the reason I'm saying this is because when we share stories, even if it's just one with one person, we create an instant connection. I know a lot of you have stories that you've never told anyone before, um, but maybe it's because you're embarrassed or ashamed, or maybe you just don't know how to tell it like I did. But I believe that those stories are the ones that are the most important to share. When I didn't know what to say, I was able to do some research on, online when the you know, internet was first becoming more you know, noticeable. But I found the story of someone who was suffering from depression. And for once, I had found someone who I could connect with. They had taken what I had been feeling and they put it into words that I can then share with other people. I had a connection, just how other people can share their stories with others and make a connection themselves. So the reason I'm saying that everyone should share their stories is because learning can happen in very different ways. Let me give you an example. A couple years ago, I had a group project to do, 
And I know there's never a good story that starts off with that sentence, but bear with me. I was doing a project with a group of friends who, you know, a topic I'm not really sure of anymore, but there was four of us. And before we started meeting, we talked about when we were going to meet, we talked about who was going to do which part of the project, and it seemed like we might actually have a you know, productive group here. For the sake of this talk, we'll call this guy Paul. So it comes time to the first meeting, and five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes go by, and Paul still isn't there. Here we go. It's going to be one of those projects. So 45 minutes into the, into the talk, or into the meeting, we finally decide, you know, after we decided that we need to get work done, I get a text from Paul, and it says, sorry, can't make it, please let me know what I miss. Sorry. So agitated, as my other group members were, I just said, don't worry about it. Just have this work done by the next meeting. We'll be on track. We'll be fine. And he simply said, OK. So next meeting rolls around. Again, 5, 10, 15 minutes go by. Paul's not there. 25 minutes later, Paul stumbles in, visibly exhausted. And you can just see he just isn't quite there. I, I recognized this before. So I look at my other group members. They're very annoyed. And so I text them and say, don't worry. I'll talk to him after the meeting. We'll get it squared away. So at the end of the meeting, I say, hey, Paul, do you mind hanging around for a second? Just want to talk about what you missed. And he said, sorry, got to go, and started to head out the door. So I catch up with him, and I figured I'd walk to him with his car just so we can get a few minutes in and discuss. So I talk to him, and I say, hey, you know, our group isn't very happy with the way that you're choosing to be part of us. Uh, you've, you know, set us back a little bit. And it was at that moment when I looked behind me, and I noticed Paul wasn't walking with me anymore. I look back, and I see Paul in the center of the sidewalk with his head down. I take a few steps forward and notice that Paul has a lot of tears running down his face. Paul had not only lost his mother to a heart attack a month prior, but he was now trying to claim dependence over his younger sibling who was going to go to foster care otherwise. And the reason he hadn't dropped out of school yet or taken a leave of absence was because this was his only opportunity to make a better life for himself and not only for himself now, but now his younger sibling. When we share our stories and our experiences, we learn from one another, and it's exceptionally important today. We live in a culture where diversity is challenged everywhere, not just based off the color of your skin, but in terms of your gender, sexuality, physical disabilities, and mental stability. And the thing we can do to move past this is share those unique experiences, our hardships, our successes, and that's when we can truly learn from one another. So the thing I always tell people is you can learn just as much from the CEO of a company as you can the homeless man who lives outside the Leacora Center. You know, we all have those unique stories and those unique opportunities. This tattoo on my wrist is just as much of a reminder for me as it is a conversation starter. It's a reminder that I didn't put a period at the end of my life. I keep going and I keep sharing. Thank you.